childminders have no qualifications. My child will not have enough children to play with. Childminders are just babysitters. My child will become too attached to one person. Childminders cannot stimulate children to learn as they do in a nursery. Childminders do not have to keep books or pay national insurance as they don't earn enough. Childminders let children watch TV while they get on with housework. You don't know what happens behind closed doors as there are no other members of staff. Childminders don't need to be registered if they accept goods rather than money. Childminders are not inspected by Ofsted in the same way nurseries are. My name is Jill Webb, I'm the Children's Services Manager for North Halifax. I've undertaken a number of jobs in early years, including a registered childminder. 20 years ago, things were beginning to change. Things are very, very different now. Um, childminders have to attend by law as part of their registration, an official pre-registration course. They have to hold a current paediatric first aid certificate, which is renewed every three years. And they have to undertake a wide variety of safeguarding and child protection training. Additionally, most childminders are level three qualified or working towards a level three qualification. And indeed, a number have degree level qualifications. My name is Sue. I'm a childminder and I work alongside my sister in her business in Shelf. Many, many years ago, childminders were people who just looked after children. Now you have to undertake a specific pre-registration course. There's lots and lots of training that you have to do um, if you're a, what they call an accredited childminder, which is what myself and Tracy are. Then you have to undergo a certain amount of training every year to maintain that accreditation, uh, particularly around safeguarding children, about basic food hygiene, about child's development and how children learn and develop. Um, so it isn't the case that you can just open your door and say, I'll look after your children for you. There's a lot more to it than that. All childminders work towards the early years foundation stage with all young children, as do all other childcare settings. Childminders may allow children to watch television as part of a pre-planned programme of activities. There are many useful television programmes that can contribute to a child's development. Often an older child who comes in from school may need a little, little bit of downtime while they watch the television. However, childminders wouldn't assume that they could carry on their housework or uh, phoning a friend or be busy with other things when they're being paid to look after children. There might be times when they choose to involve children in that. For instance, lots of children enjoy being out in the garden and helping to plant seeds and grow plants and things. But the focus of a childminder's time will be to look after the child. A lot of people have got that misconception and that's what it is, a misconception. Childminders are trained um, and well qualified to do more than babysit children. We're all interested in children's learning and children's needs and we are, follow the same framework that the nurseries do, the early years framework. Um, we monitor children's progress, we keep records, we track children's progress and it's not around babysitting, it's helping children to learn and grow and develop and their potential. What's important is that parents realise that childminding today is a profession. Um, there are highly skilled, well-trained childminders within Calderdale ready to discuss yours and your child's needs with you. And I think it's important that parents don't discount childminders as one of a range of options. My name's Rachel. I'm a single mum of um, Evie and Amy who was looked after by Vicky Patterson. My childminder offers the comforts and security of Evie's own home environment plus she has other children to play with of a similar age and she's not restricted to four walls because Evie and her childminder and the other children go out they go to parent and toddlers, they go to childminding groups they go to play gyms so there's always like other children as well as the children she's looking after so she's interacting with a lot of different children Vicky Patterson I live in a small house in Ellen, I childmind for six years um, I've got a small group of children. Everything we can think of. Painting, gloop, foam, water play, sand play, role play, story time. It meets their learning styles. It fits in with how they learn, how they're developing, 
moves them on, gives you a chance to observe them at their level. I'm level four and currently going through my foundation degree. I think if you're serious about the job, then you should be qualified. You won't work anywhere without qualifications and this should be no different. My name's Linda Halliwell and I've been a childminder for over 20 years. Um, I look after three children and if I have a help with my, um, a qualified assistant um, I can look after six children but generally I just have three children in my setting so I, I can see to each child's individual needs. I think in my setting my children meet lots of different people because we, we're, we go out to play gyms, they're not confined to, to one space. Child minders are able to go and meet different people you know, different people, visit different places. A child might be mixing with children younger than themselves and older than them themselves. And this is really useful for children's development. It encourages their personal, social and emotional development. And that's particularly important when that might be different from their home setting. They might be the only child in that family or maybe there's a large age gap between that child and their siblings. And they enjoy that variety of ages to play with and learn from. They learn to socialise with other children, they learn, they learn routines and structure, um, play and we also have school children in our setting, we have a before and after school and our children, have, we have strong links with the schools so our children go with us, the little ones go with us to take the children to school and to pick them up um, and so they are very familiar with the school routine. I think all parents are uneasy the first time they leave their child with somebody new. The important thing is that they've got to learn to trust you and feel comfortable in, and safe in leaving their child with you. Um, it's a big step having a, a child and then going out to work and leaving your child if that's what you do. I encourage the parents as well to tell us what their children are doing, what they're interested in. Tell us have they done anything that they want to share with us so it's a two-way process not just what we do. Parents are the most important people in children's lives and all that a childminder or any other childcare professional does is reinforces that so they're always going to see the same face and um, meet the same people there and many children and parents really enjoy that about using a childminder. They do become attached to you but it, not in that sort of way. Uh, they become attached because they um, feel secure with you. You just want that child to feel happy and secure in, in your environment. That's a concern for any parent that leaves their child in any childcare setting, whether that's a childminder or a group setting where there might be a key person. Every childminder is CRB checked and every member of that childminder's family is CRB checked, including young people aged 16 and over. So parents have a certainty from that. They have a certainty from the registration process, which includes a suitability interview with Ofsted that the, these childminders have been very thoroughly checked out. I'm Nicola, I work at um, Top of the Hill Childminders, I co-childmind with Carla. We're sort of a, I'd say, medium-sized setting. We're based up in like Dodnay, so we've got like lovely countryside, so we like to go out and about. We've both had years of experience really, we've worked in nurseries and as a nanny, um, so we were already qualified, we both like our level 3 childcare qualifications. Each day we do like activities relating to our planning and what's, you know, what we're working on. Like at the moment we're doing Chinese New Year, so we've got making Chinese lanterns and things like that. All of the children have their own like tracking where we do observations on them and um, basically just observing their interests really and where they're up to and then we plan sort of specific activities around them working through their early learning goals. It's really important yeah obviously to keep the children stimulated and to ensure that we you know they're getting the best out of, of the setting really and being able to you know move them along in whatever whatever they're, they're working on. I'm Liz Anstey, I'm Archie's grandma. 
quality of the staff um, is really what you're looking for. But then after that, you're looking at the ratio of children to um, qualified staff. Um, and then you're looking at, generally, your first impressions when you come in. Um, so I think he's going to get a really good range of experiences here and I think that's really going to help him develop. It's important to remember that all early years settings are required by law to work towards the early years foundation stage which sets out goals for children's achievements by the end of the reception year at age five and childminders along with group settings work towards these as part of their daily practice so childminders will be looking with you and your child about where their development's at and where you want them to go next. My youngest, Evie, has come on leaps and bounds as speech and language because she's interacting with other children, whereas if I was still at home, she wouldn't be. It'd just be me and her. So she's talking to other children on her level, she's interacting with other children on her level. Vicky can identify all Evie's needs and she can create activities that are developing her needs. Evie's got a single consistent caregiver rather than having four or five different ones that she has to get to know and get used to. We change the setting in accordance with, not necessarily seasons, but things that are happening, like at the moment it's winter, so we have a, an area that looks like snow, we've got sparkly lights. In spring, we'll do things about flowers and daffodils and, and how things grow and how life evolves. And every year we have duck eggs and we incubate them and hatch them and the children absolutely love that listen to what the children are telling us that they're interested in and we design the setting around that. I have a lot, an awful lot of resources um, for each individual age and stage of development and whatever the child is interested in I'm able to provide that to you know further their interest. Coming to a child mind you've just got individual individual care for your child you're not one of many you know parents can come and speak to me um, and they always know it's going to be me you know, they can resolve all issues and anything that a child um, particularly wants, that, you know, I, I'm able to provide that. And so it becomes a very close relationship, you know, and fle a flexible relationship as well. It helps us to um, evaluate our setting and, you know, to make important changes, um, you know, for each individual child. Basically, Ofsted coming um, to, to inspect us, race standards and uh, networks. Um, we have a network in Calderdale and we're inspected every three months. There are various teams within the local authority that support childminders. It's very important that parents check that any childminder is a registered childminder, which can be checked on the Ofsted website. So that really is a check on quality. Childminding is a profession that's changed massively in recent years and is now a very professional profession as part of the childcare sector. As with any other childcare worker, a childminder is required to declare their income. Most childminders are self-employed, so they keep their own accounts and declare annually any tax owing and they have national insurance deductions made. Um, any registered childminder knows that it is not legal to accept goods instead of payments for services, as indeed it wouldn't be for anybody else in, in a line of work. My name is Sue. I'm a childminder and I work alongside my sister in her business in Shelf. We have a purpose made setting which is part of Tracy's house but is separate from Tracy's house uh, with a playroom which is designated and designed around the children's needs. It's down to parental choice of what they want to have. Um, some parents like a childminder because they think it's more of a homely atmosphere, more of a family setting, which it is. We're very much a family. Find out what's available. Find out what you want for your child and go around and have a look at them. Listen to what parents in the community are telling you. Word of mouth is a good thing. And if you know someone who's with a childminder, you know, who uses a childminder and who is very happy and can give you good reports of that, that childminder, then maybe they're, they're the ones that you need to visit. Mm -hmm.